Hello everyone and welcome to the second part of my collaboration with Gravity Sketch as their designer residence. Um, today I thought I'd hop straight into VR, be a bit more spontaneous with these videos, um, just how I'd actually pick up one of these headsets and get working in the middle of my process. So we're starting off here, it's lovely, it's an environment, but we'll move over to Gravity Sketch straight away and get sketching. So we've jumped straight into Gravity Sketch here and I've loaded up this sort of working environment that I've put in place with a few sketches and a reference model as well that we're gonna be using to help us get the proportions and sort of the ergonomics and anthropometrics right um, with the sketch that we're gonna to do today, uh, which is of this backpack, which you might recognize from a previous video. Um, we sort of started off with these initial sketches here and then when we did these, we moved on to presenting them as a presentation sketch page, which is sort of nice and descriptive. Um, I then went and did a marker sort of drawing, which didn't show in the video, but um, hopefully sort of the next step is to get this into 3D, which is what we're going to do today. Um, we've, so thankfully we don't need to do the thumbnails again. We don't need to do the presentation sketch again. If you, if you go watch that video first before watching this one, where well, we also did this sort of lovely mood board, which I've dropped in as a really nice sort of visual reference aid for, for when we're modeling. You can sort of see the inspiration on uh, where we've come from um, when we did the sketch pages. And yeah, we're just gonna try and get that into, into 3D now, because I think that this is sort of descriptive enough on in, in 2D, but it might be nice to start seeing how this form sort of comes together. And I think that this is the perfect application of, of Gravity Sketch at this point in the process, um, just seeing you know your, your 2d ideas come to life a bit better uh, into 3d so yeah we're gonna get into that now i think so i'm just gonna drop in another reference picture of a sort of side profile of a backpack i think that this is going to be really useful for sort of helping us define the proportions and keeping it sort of on the right scale for the for the reference model that we brought in I just really want to be able to define the sort of front profile of the backpack quite well and just make sure that the depth is all all okay and in proportion. I'll just turn down the opacity on that. And yeah, now we've got a nice sort of underlay to sort of start sketching with. So I think we're gonna go for just a really dark gray, uh, just using the sort of the standard uh, drawing tool and just start laying down some sort of touch points where the bag would sort of touch the body so around the sort of neck and, and the straps and the back as well so i'm going to try not to be too precious with this and i guess just go back in and and adapt these points as i need to um i guess the initial stroke i kind of just want to be as quick as as possible and then i can always go back in and edit it like this to, to get it closer to where i want it to be I guess, as I said in the last episode, I still want this to be sort of efficient, otherwise it's not worth using. But, you know, from, from what I've found, Gravity Sketch is, is quite worth using. So I'm sure there'll be no problems with that. Just gonna change that, move it up there a little bit so it wraps around. And this is the benefit of working with, with an actual sort of human model. I just grabbed this off of uh, grab CAD or CG Trade or wherever it was, but uh, it's really useful for just sort of laying down the, the right proportions like this. And as you can see, that was a bit of a dodgy line, but it doesn't matter because I can always fix it and simplify it. I'll go for the second strap here. Again, it's not perfect, but that doesn't matter. I always tend to simplify the lines down quite a bit, actually. Um, the, you know, the less points you have, the smoother it's going to be because there's less stopping it from being a perfect line, I guess. As you can see with the back plate here, I'm just sort of reducing the points where I actually don't need them and just letting the sort of spine itself do the, do the work and keep the line smooth. I think we've pretty much covered all of the sort of touch points of where the backpack would be. So I'm going to move on to the, the sort of the side profile now, I think, and just start laying down. You can see there, where there's a bit of a chamfer in the, there at the top. I guess it goes like back a bit, maybe a bit more. This backpack, as the reference, is a bit rounded, so I'm probably going to cut down a bit and cut across. Let's see. That's, that's about right. 
maybe it needs to be a bit deeper. Um, but I'm literally just going to split this as I've got the mirror tool on, which again is another important thing to do. If you want to do something like this that's symmetrical, save yourself a lot of time, just put the mirror tool on. You see there, I've just deleted a point to make sure that the line stays smooth. And um, now I'm going to go and sort of adjust it from the other side, I think, as well. Making it a bit more like a backpack shape. So it's got stuff in it. And then now I'm going to add some sort of uh, more more profiles and cross sections. So I guess like these pockets, uh, not perfect line to start with, but we'll come back and look at that in a moment. And then this sort of cross section across the top. Now that is not good at all, but I'm going to edit that line now. Need to push it up a little bit. They need to join together and it is way too, way too round. So, can... Oh no, don't want to do that. I need to add a few more points and then bring it round instead. Because at the moment it looks like a sort of Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle backpack. A few too many points at the bottom there. So I'm just going to drag this down. Hopefully that'll pull, yeah, that'll pull the weight of it down a little bit. There we go. So that's sort of just establishing, I guess, another angle of the backpack. I think in the sketch it sort of arches downwards a little bit, so I'll move that. I need to bring those in as well. It's the moment there. Just having them in the back, which is not ideal. And this isn't going to be perfect because this is sort of my plan is to use this sketch as a bit of a 3D underlay. And then maybe in the next episode, go in and do some sort of subdivision modeling. Um, you know, the thing is, if I'd done those sketches and wanted to get them into 3D, you know, in a normal way, I could have gone into Blender, but that probably have taken me hours to do. So this is sort of a perfect place to use Gravity Sketch, I guess, just to get a feel for the form in 3D. There's definitely this sort of place in between where you don't want to be going straight to CAD, but also you want more than more than a sketch, I guess. And I think that this is this is yeah. Oh God, no! Turn that off. This is, yeah, definitely the, the best place for that. Um, uh, maybe if I just make it all the same thickness and then connect them. Yeah, that'll probably work. I think it's too thick. Yeah, there we go. Yeah, as I was saying, I think that this is a, this is a good application. I'm just trying to be as sort of efficient as I, as I possibly can. I think I might make that orange and do the little Little loops. Yeah, that's about right. Just make that a bit smaller. Yeah, there we go. It's nice to just add a few little details like this, like it just sort of sets it apart from being a pretty basic sketch. And now maybe I just need to define the top a little bit more. Sort of around these, around these edges, I guess. Because I guess it would sort of fold, fold underneath each other, it wouldn't just go straight to that back plate. Once again, it's coming in handy to have used this this human model to just make sure the proportions are right. Um, I think you can ex import. OBJs and, and a few different other files into Gravity Sketch, which was just really useful and quite easy. Um, next, we're going to sort of define this top section, which is quite a nice and easy task. I 
sort of thinking of this being a part where the sort of bungee cords could sort of hold other things or you know loosen and tighten the backpack a bit like some sort of, sort of the North Face ones that you can get. Um, but it's a nice place for sort of graphics and different sort of material patterns as well as, as you'll see in a minute I think. Just knitting up those lines but not being too precious about it. Again, just keeping it simple by simplifying the points so the, the spines are nice and smooth. And this little reflective patch here, it's quite easy again. I think I loop the, the ends. I just love the way that the sort of brush stroke goes down, it keeps it quite dynamic, which is good, I guess. I'll add this, oh, no, it's not gonna work. So I'll just add this sort of pocket space, I guess. Maybe it's slightly different to the sketch that I did, but I think it looks better in 3D. Gives the bag a bit of a smile. <laughs> coming together quite nicely. Uh, I'm gonna add these sort of side loops, just using the copy and paste feature to save myself some time. And then I think I'm gonna switch to the volume tool and just do these little sort of clips here. That works quite well, actually, I think. I'm just moving them about. And I'll just do one on this sort of central pillar here as well. I should have turned off the mirror for this, but it's fine. It's just a sort of appearance thing at the moment. And then, yep, the central sort of buckle bit where all of the all of the cord and bungees will go through. This just sort of helped define the profile of the front of the bag as well. I think it could be quite nice. Yeah, looking good. I think I'm going to go ahead and try and do some of the bungees just for a nice bit of detail. Um, I guess not critical, I'll probably redo these when I come to do the final model, but it just helps make the initial sort of design pop a little bit. It gets us a bit closer to the sketch that we did. Add a little buckle there. Yeah, that looks really good. Really like that. It's a backpack for sure. I'm just going to move that up there as well, just to sort of connect the pieces together. It's a good thing I like about Gravity Sketch. You can just go back and edit what you've done already and sort of seamlessly link it up with, with what you've just done. And it's quite, quite forgiving software. Let me do this handle at the top. It's a bit more square than that. Uh, that's much better view to look at it from. Yeah, that's something I've found. Don't, don't try and, like, I find myself putting myself in awkward positions with Gary Sketch, trying to sort of crook my neck to get in the right places when realistically I could just move to <laughs> to the place and the perspective that I should be looking at. But hey ho, just gonna add some sort of Nike ticks here for a little bit of, I don't know, a little bit of playful branding gives the gives the sketch a bit more context and makes it look like our, our sketch on paper, which is great. Looking good. I'll just turn off that because I don't need it anymore. Um, oh, whoops. Yeah, you can see maybe I didn't quite center the mannequin too perfectly, but it's okay. We can just go back in and, and edit that slightly. Um, I think the backpack's looking a bit too square, so I might just round up some of these corners. Again, this is great, I can just go in and, and you can easily just copy and paste all of this and iterate and, and redo it. But I think we're getting close to finishing now. It's looking really good, very happy with this. Just gonna keep tinkering with it. And you could, you could endlessly just keep tinkering with it, but 
I think I'm really happy with that right now, how it is. It's definitely a good starting point to sort of use as almost a 3D underlay for, for doing the CAD. And I will definitely come back in the next episode and, and, and model this up in subdivision. So yeah, we've done it. We've managed to turn our 2D sketches from there into a 3D sketch that we can move around and have a look at, which is great. I'm just gonna add some little loops to finish the model off. There, these aren't perfect. I should probably have the mirror tool on, but that's it. Yeah, I'm really happy with that. Um, just one more there. But yeah, you can see quite how quickly you can sort of translate your 2D sketches. And I mean, the value of this, something you can you can look at and you can move around and it sort of validates the, the 2D sketch a little bit quite quickly because it's the same fidelity sort of, sort of. And yeah, you can turn down the opacity and then use that as an underlay, lock the layer. But yeah, I'm really happy with that. I think it looks great. Definitely sort of sells the idea of the concept and says sort of utility, your conditions to me. So, you know, it's just really useful to have all these visual aids around as well. So this is something I'd really recommend doing um, before you start setting up. So hopefully you're able to see how we've made that journey from the sort of mood board that we did earlier in the first video onto the sketches. Uh, the more sort of presentation sketches and then all the way through to a lovely sort of sketched up gravity sketch model uh, which we can use as a sketch underlay for modeling which will be the next part um, it's sort of the same fidelity as that uh, presentation sketch page you could easily put someone in VR and get them to walk around and evaluate this and, and tweak little bits but I'm really happy with how this model has come out so yeah, stay tuned for the next parts. I hope that you enjoyed this video and thanks again for Gravity Sketch uh, for supporting me through this collaboration. Thank you.